Buenos días a todos y hello, gracias hello everyone. Thank you once again for connecting to our channels and our social network, Melia Light Pitur. We are live with the different leaders of areas and we are exploring the most important points of this Pitur 2022. Welcome everyone and thank you again. It's lovely to be here with you all. It's a pleasure for me, a special pleasure to be with someone, a marvelous person. Laura de Vega, she is a director for Food and Beverage and Premium Brands. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. And with Laura, we're going to be dealing with one of the most interesting subjects for the world. It's food and beverage. Who is not interested in knowing something about this, Laura? So, we are here, streaming and live. So, what's the global strategy of Melia for food and beverage? Well, we are delighted to have a slot and to be able to participate in this live session to explain what the global session and strategy is for food and beverage. There's no single formula in Melia because you have to take into account the different brands, the different brands we have in our portfolio, the segment of customers that we target. And of course, in the same way as we sell rooms to different segments, we are defining strategies, taking into account the different variables. All this environment of the pandemic has made food and beverage, of course, be part of the core business of the company. Clearly, we are developing and incorporating many more teams and brands into the portfolio, focusing on F and B. And furthermore, we have the chance to incorporate strategic relations with other operators, and this contributes added value. So as to these strategies, they are defined by brand, and uh, we take into account the profile of the customer, the profitability that we have to obtain, but most especially the experience of our customers. That is our, the basis of everything we do. And all the issue of the pandemic and the post-pandemic times, if we can say, well, digitation has played a very important role, both as regards the sale of rooms and services and also the world of f &B. So we have this cultural transformation that we are dealing with. It's part of our DNA, really, our daily work. We are working, there are many more commercial formula for the customers. Because of this digital world, we have a great direct contact with our users, our customers. And this is what we've been focusing on in these last months, working, incorporating all this uh, digitation part, including the backup house and warehouse and procurement systems and reportings done digitally, and also what is sold to our customers. We are improving the customer journey very much, and through our social networks, you can actually apply for these, the purchase and you can implement payment. So we're working on all these systems that give us very good information of customers, and we can use this for marketing and communication, right? Yes, marketing and communication, all sorts of things. And then, too, we have this uh, different Yes, it depends on brands, whether we have a, a customer who's uh, somebody experiencing the offers at the hotel, well, then we focus on that. We're always trying to improve all the time, increase uh, the quality of the products, follow macro trends to facilitate processes. This is what we're doing in the central headquarter kitchens, and it means improving experiences through standardization and increasing the final experience for customers. You talked before with Alfonso del Pollo about the experience in Paradisus, yes? I mean, those restaurants, and you said it's like eating in a restaurant in Miami. Yes, indeed, I did. Yes, so, well, slowly, really, this is what we're doing. We're improving all these uh, customer experiences and all the services. I mean, Melia Hotels International is acknowledged because of its high-quality associated services. I mean, breakfast is, uh, well, we're very well known for our breakfast. And then all the offer for mice, yes, for the business part of it all. And here, um, we're focusing really very much on improving everything thanks to to this digitation and then as well in our premium brands where we do work maybe more on local 
experiences, we highlight ad hoc created experiences for our premium brands. And then what we do is um, improve the general experience by means of our own concepts or through certain partnerships that we work on with brands that can contribute value. Yes, Laura, food and beverage after rooms is indeed one of the most important income channels in the hotel business and Melia Hotels International, thanks to your work and that of all the food and beverage team, we have contributed so much to this area, yes. And maybe many years ago, it was, what could I say? It wasn't so special or so much taken care of. We know now you have collaboration with very prestigious chefs, with very well-known brands, and this is great. It brings along really an important competition profile because it makes Melia be part of the world of sophistication and it really makes the hotel product really very, very good all round. Could you tell us who are the partners that Melia is working with right now and what are the most interesting openings? So give us just a bit of what's in the pipeline so that we can start salivating and getting people interested in our hotels and cuisine, well, you've made this very easy for me because, indeed, this is what we do. We look for these special relationships with good counselors, with celebrity chefs, with well-known brands or partnerships with brands that are established in the market already. We have three main points to highlight after the consolidation and the opening of the Roca restaurant in our Dubai hotel. We have opened very recently the Tuma restaurant in our Grand Melia Phoenix Hotel here in Madrid. Yes, here in Madrid. It's been really something incredible because it places us in the international landscape, in the international landscape. And this is, I mean, because of the, the group is well known. So Roca and Zuma, they only the, the well known for the world. I mean, congratulations. Yes, we're so happy. And then the idea with these strategic partners that we have is not only to be there in the places in which we are physically, but also to define a roadmap as to what else can we offer. And this makes us be really a high value added company for our partners too, because they grow with us. And if we talk about the Atumi, the great international group, but we have other local agreements, for example, with the Habitat group that's also here in, in Madrid, in the Gran Via, we're going to be growing with them in Calvia, in Mallorca, we have the Azotea group coming to our inside in Calvia for this summer and others with whom we were working previously, the Lateral group, for example, and there we are continuously contributing a value for our partners. And what do we get from them? Well, the position in the market and customers who are loyal to brands are happy about this too. We are able to work, of course, uh, different marketing and positioning lines. And as the results have been really successful, in all these different recent practices we have been implementing, we continue. We also have examples. And another one I could tell you is the great success of the Mi brand, yeah? Well, the Rosa Negra group, which is a group working in Mexico, but also in, in other international concepts and locations, and the Rosa Negra group, takes very much into account uh, well the heritage and culture and they want to take Latin American gastronomy to new heights. We have started with them in one of the hotels in Mexico and they have taken the operation of the hotel, um, creating ad hoc for gastronomical concerts, both for the beach club and the rooftop and for two specialty restaurants there. The idea with them, as I said, is, well, this special partnership and we want to create a future port you're working with these heavyweight brands. So more openings, Laura, tell us a bit more. Yes, indeed, with Gino Gadamba, we've opened three in the UK, and currently we have Liverpool, Manchester, and Newcastle, and we are also contributing there for the Me in London, a recent opening, Luciano, 
and with this company, Gina Campo Food and Leisure, we're going to be continu continuing in and having greater expansion. So openings in the pipeline, other than this one of Zuma Madrid, well, we have Inigo Rezu, the chef, currently in our restaurant in Marbella, in the Don Pepe Gran Melia. And this chef will be opening with us uh, as, uh, well, he's going to be counseling us uh, for a restaurant oven in Frankfurt. And there he'll be in charge, transmitting gastronomy and knowledge as to uh, grill for the German market, obviously, together with the Melia Spanish brand, well known already in Germany. Laura, in the partners, contributes so much much to you, many values, and this is intense work, I'm sure. But we know that in our hotels, we have our own concepts that are highly successful. We are really able to work on food and beverage directly on our own. Could you give us two or three examples of restaurants that we as Melia operate as our own and have been really successful with the customers in the hotel and also people coming from the street, which is a challenge because traditionally hotels with their own restaurants tended to be addressed to the courtive guests, but now, thanks to this more American open style that has finally reached Europe, well, people actually go from the street to the hotel to have an important gastronomical experience with very good restaurants. So, a couple of examples of our own Melia concept in restaurants that people go to, external customers appreciate. Well, of course, our relationship with the third customers is more recent, but we do have it. It's part of us. It's part of our expertise in the, to develop our own concepts. So, yes, we have a library of 50 own concepts of the group that are worked on depending on the brand and the type of concept. Let me highlight, for example, there's a very good position of the Reggio Rooftop um, brand in me, in Milano, London, and Madrid. And these venues have this very important component of cultural activity, art, and music. And this one then is a million own brand as part of our portfolio. We have Cape Now as well. Yes, yeah, Cape Now Beach Club, absolutely. This is a brand that's international, a Melia brand, and a good success example. We have it in Minorca, and in Minorca we are contributing, you know, seafood, local seafood products, agreements with co-ops. Yeah, the caldereta, the lots of caldereta, indeed. And we have all this connection with the environment. And then we also have, as well as this bookshop of concepts, we have concepts that we have worked on, created ad hoc for the destination where we start from scratch. And a great example is the guard in the inside in Luxembourg. It, it grew. So it had to do with the um, urban gardens, typical of Luxembourg. It's contributed by the hotel. And there is even um, a little orchard there and the vegetable patch in the hotel, and it, it connects incredibly with local produce. And there we serve, well, local mustard, uh, goat cheese, local goat cheese. We work with wholemeal flowers for all the gatos, and we cook with the cocot concept, which is this special slow traditional cuisine that really keeps the value of the product. This would be an example of, out of many others we have created this year, we have also the Sky Bar in the inside Amsterdam and other concepts that we apply. Yes, they all must be discovered. People must visit the hotels. In this new f and model, Laura, what aspects will be taken into account? You talked about local gastronomy, kilometer zero. What will you take into account? So sustainable, healthy, food? Stuff, mm, uh, small 
small generation of ways, buying locally, what are the aspects that right now uh, you are working on most as regards food and beverage? Well, in fact, after me, there'll be Lourdes Ripoy talking about our strategic line, which is a, a basic uh, cross-cutting pillar. In food and beverage, indeed, it has to be reflected. So we have different technological solutions that uh, are something we can use already, and they help us reduce impact, yes? For example, we work on using raw materials properly, making sure we don't generate too much waste, and we measure and weigh very well. But not only this, where we are also creating a good impact is, uh, well, because less uh, carbon footprint and the way we deal with raw materials. Also, we have this commitment, yes, we believe in sustainable development, the UN goals, and we don't want to throw food away because food that is okay will not be thrown away. And we have uh, alliances with Too Good to Good to Go, for example. We work jointly to have this awareness as to responsible consumption. And then the fact is that one has to adapt, you have to offer it. It's not really a trend, but rather mandatory. You have to offer products that have the stamp guaranteeing traceability of the product, MSC, for example, for fish. So very slowly, of course, any fishing activity has to be certified because they're interested in working with us and it means that fishing is more responsible. We have incorporated the MSC stamp. We have um, willow fees that we worked on in the Canaries in order to promote local fishing produce. And we wanted to have certain tender activities and our company participated as well. And then all the uh, zero mile part, yes, to make it local. I was telling you the, the guard example, yes. It's not a trend any longer, it's mandatory. And you have to deal with local produce, definitely. You have to consume things that come from local groups and cooperatives. So it means having a responsible behavior in those destinations in which we operate. We are an international company and we are, well, sometimes in destinations that are not so developed. So we have to work on, on special orchards and gardens. We have that in Zanzibar, for example, or coffee plantations. We have it in the Arusia Gran Melia in Tanzania where we have our own coffee production, limited, of course, but we use it for the hotel. It's lovely, lovely, great, Laura. Finally, very briefly, could you tell us what the main steps are, without giving us too much detail, but to understand how uh, uh, your own concept is created for a restaurant? Yes, I do understand. This, the guard concept, for example, I mentioned. Well, first of all, you start by analyzing the market. You have to see what you have surrounding your location, what are the restaurants there are, what the size is. Then you have this market survey. And then, listen, when we work in destinations where we don't have some expertise, we use local consultants, consultancy services telling us about this. And once you have the market survey and the analysis, you have to see what the gastronomic direction is that you want for the restaurant once you obtain this market information. Once you have defined the gastronomic product and style that you want to offer and what the, the kind of environment is that you want to pursue, we go on to select products to make that possible. And you see it's very multidisciplinary because, of course, the design of the interior design of the restaurant and the physical product go together. And they go along with the culinary gastronomic concept. So you generate the whole product as regards the interior design, designing, well, everything, you know, to make sure that the whole experience is narrating the same story. After that, one goes on to the menu, and once you have the menu created, well, there you get marketing for anything that has to do with branding and all the collaterals you've got to create. You generate the storytelling 
then you get the collateral you need to develop and commercialize the concept. And finally, well, mise en scène, you train the staff, you make sure that we comply with everything, stamp certifications, and that all the employees know how to convey and communicate the brand, and a good marketing plan for launching and continuity of the outlet, both from marketing and social media, and create the whole strategy to launch and communicate all the time. Perfect. Well, it's very, very interesting. Thank you so much, Lara. We've loved it. It's great to create concepts in Melia. It's not easy. There's this full integration of decor experience and even the crockery and the cutlery and even what the employees wear. So it's a whole, a, a real strategy that goes to the customer. Lara, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for saying it so well. It's been great to find out about food and beverage. And thank you all for following us. And we invite you to stay tuned, connect again. We'll be back with our Vice President for SG, Lourdes Ripoll at Port Basque. Thank you all. Melia, live Fitur. Thank you, Fitur 2022. Goodbye.